Ah, these things keep coming to me one after another. It's a 585A now. Forget lifting it. I can't even move it all by myself. It's it's so heavy. And um, the previous owner uh, did release the magic smoke from this. So I'm not sure if I can restore it, but I'll give it a try. First exercise in the weight uh, reduction program is to check out the plugin type 82. That's the rear side of it. These are the knobs for releasing the case. Two on the right side, and, uh, two on the left side. And they've marked the direction on which you're supposed to turn this to release it. And then you can lift the case up. And uh, that's where the whole unit gets suspended out of the rack. Okay, that's the unit with its case up. And uh, not sure to which animal this belongs to, but unfortunately this is disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Not sure if I'm gonna really attempt it or not. I'm gonna take this out and then you know keep the car aside. The condition of this scope was so bad that um, you know I had to resort to the basic cleaning method, like how you wash a car, just soap water and keep rinsing it. So this is after about three rounds of rinsing, and I'm gonna you know clean it up completely, and then we'll continue. It's been a couple of days. Uh, the cleaning is in progress and. Uh, now it is sitting for uh, drying. Now I've removed the CRT as well because it's going to be a little bit unsafe to move this thing around with the CRT inside. It's, it's, it's damn heavy as well. That's how it is now. That's how you wash and uh, dry an oscilloscope. It helps to take uh, some of the intestine and other organs out to get the sunlight in and dry it properly. I've removed uh, some more components of the oscilloscope like these uh, capacitor uh, condoms, uh, filter, fan and stuff like that and the cover is out there. Okay I'm done with the cleaning and uh, the chassis is in. The plug-in and the CRT are off because I was uh, tossing the chassis up and down during cleaning and I didn't want to you know mess up anything. Otherwise it's all done. Those are the accessories uh, removed for cleaning. The fan, front bezel, HV case protection, etc. etc. And that's the rear side. I've removed the fan case and the filter. Let's start with the first problem. The fan. It's seized up. So let me fix the fan first. This is about a minute after uh, applying the oil, so it's all good. Thought I'll give a quick exercise to the fan. Uh, so I've disconnected one terminal up from here where the fan connector is uh, wired to the ceramic strip, and the other one is uh, plugged directly into the power cord, so that the power doesn't reach anything else other than the fan. Uh, the fan seems to be okay. Also, a quick point: this power is coming from Variac, so I didn't power it up directly to the line. That's a fan assembly completely installed. I mean the filter and the bezel. Okay I was reforming the caps and uh, I guess I found what was actually blown on this. You can see this terminal for the capacitor. It looks like it's been burned out because there's carbon in there so most likely there was some dust or something else which is sitting in between and kind of burned that whole thing out. This capacitor is good it's reforming well but I'm gonna replace it. This is C640 and that's the replacement capacitor. In case if you are recapping or uh, reforming, remember to check this capacitor hidden deep inside. This is right behind the vertical uh, plug-in connector, 8 microfarad capacitor, so don't forget to check this guy. Okay, I've removed the handle from the right-hand side and took out the crossbar, which sits here, to access uh, this capacitor. 
the one right here. That's a decoupling capacitor for uh, the power supply. That's the only capacitor which is paper in it. The rest all of them are uh, mica, mylar, film or whatever you call it. This one tiny electrolytic here, but I think that's gonna be okay. Watch out for this guy. I've tested this capacitor and in this case, it seems to be good. So I'm gonna leave it there, but it's worth checking because this is the same type and value of capacitor which leaks in now uh, 549s causing a non-linear display so you know it's better to test this guy to add to the list of endless problems you may have on one of these instruments have a look at this cable the insulation is broken here which potentially could rub against the chassis and short circuit the visual inspection all throughout the instrument always helps a lot so i'm done with the cleaning as i said earlier and i've uh, reformed all the capacitors as well uh, replaced one electrolytic, the rest all of them are good. So before I test the tubes, I thought I'll uh, give it a quick power up with uh, heater only and see how is it going. So the next step is to take out the time delay relay. That's out. They've used a 18 volt uh, delay relay in this 18NO30, which means the heater in this is 18 volts and uh, it's normally open with a 30 second uh, delay. Finally the scope is on the bench. Okay I've connected the power cord to my Variac. Um, I'm using a 10 amp Variac because this thing draws quite a lot of power. Okay let me increase the input voltage. There it starts spinning. This is with about 80-85 volts to the input. The fan is working fine. So I'm going to leave it like at, like this for a while and then we will go to the line voltage. The screen illumination or the graphical illumination is also up which means at least the heat or rail is good. Now if I cut the light I should be able to see the tubes glowing and there they are. It's been warming up at uh, 85 volts for a while. Now I'm gonna go all the way to line volts, which is 120. And you can see the tubes lit up. And that's a front panel. Here is a view of the time base and power supply section. While the scope is still running with just heater power, it's a good time to check the 12.6 volt power supply output. So that regulator, the 12.6 volt regulator sits here right at the back side of the unit. And I'm gonna bring in my most advanced multimeter to check the output. That's gonna be 11.3 volts while the plate voltage is not there. Now, this is measured right here at the output of the regulator. Now the next step is to test all the tubes. I've tested all the tubes and uh, just one 6080 was bad. Uh, it is leaking, that's all. Otherwise all other tubes be good. The next task is to install the CRT. So let me get the CRT.
it is an absolute pain to install the CRT in the scope. The anode connection that is plugged in now, uh, it's, it's kind of, you know, so little space you have in there to go in and plug it. It's, it's a little bit of a struggle. So those connections are done as well. And then the last piece is uh, those two connections are uh, the termination for the distributed deflection plate. And what you see here is the termination network. We will cover that in detail when I do the uh, overview video. And now we have two more connections to make, which is the actual vertical output, which goes from the vertical power output stage here to the deflection plate input right underneath here. So, yep, accessibility is an issue with the scope. I've turned the scope upside down because it was impossible to connect these uh, from the other side. So that's after connecting the deflection plate and the connector at the base of the CRT is also plugged in. Now to the plug-in. Um, I gave it the same treatment like the chassis, you know, cleaned it inside out and uh, checked most of the capacitors. And rest of it, it's mostly solid state, I mean transistors and diodes, and uh, both tubes in the output. There are new vistas as well inside the plug-in, right at the front end. There are a bunch of capacitors uh, down here, which needs attention, so you minute to test and, um, you know, recap if required. I reformed all of them. It took a while, but all of them came back to life and the three tubes in the final uh, output stage of the plugin. There are numerous transistors. Uh, I didn't test any of them. I'll see in case if I find issues. That's a plugin connector. There's a double insurance. I'm also gonna check the power supply rail resistance, which is documented in the um, service manual. So this is the power supply test point next to the transformer. Starting from here, minus 150, plus 100, plus 225, plus 350, and uh, plus 500. So let's measure the resistance and see if it's matching with the service manual spec. Analog meter, so you have to zero this thing, which is kind of zeroed. Let's start with minus 150. That's supposed to be um, at uh, two or three kilo ohms. It's not bad. And then let's go to plus 100. That's supposed to be 2.2 .2 kilo ohms. Not bad. And plus two to five, we are at six. 6.5 and 6.5 is about 6. 6.5 is the spec. Again, I wouldn't complain about that. And plus 350 is supposed to be at uh, 25k. Uh, we are slightly over 25k, so it's not bad. And plus 500 is supposed to be at 33k. We are over 40. So, you know, it's, it's, it's a high value. So I wouldn't really complain about it. All we're looking for here is to make sure that none of these rails are showing a super low value, indicating some sort of short. So all the rails seems to be good as well. Let's go ahead and uh, power it up. This is the instrumentation I've wired up. Uh, technically five multimeters uh, to monitor all the five rails. Uh, this is not really necessary. You could just monitor minus 150 and you know one of the 350 rails just to get a hang of what's going on. but. Since I have the meters, I thought I'll hook all of them and see what's going on. Also in the scope, I just take the test connections or the test points directly from the power supply ceramic strip because that's easy. All I have to do is uh, look for the exact pins where these voltages are available and you know hook them onto the multimeters. And I'm going to use my Variac to power up. But remember, the Variac is not really helpful because it is a time delay relay. All I'm going to use the Variac for is to set the starting voltage to be at around 80. 80 to 85 uh, so that it just makes the relay click and uh, hold the plate voltages and then once I see things are okay I'll uh, increase the voltage. Couple of uh, pre-flight checklist items. One intensity to the minimum, scale illumination on so that you know it's up and time per division on both the time bases to be at somewhere at 0.5 to 0.2 milliseconds line trigger on the plug-in vertical position to mid position uh, single channel we don't want to do dual trace at this point in time and horizontal position also to midpoint horizontal display to time base a triggering level at midpoint okay let's start 
and just before I insert the time delay tube or the time delay relay, let's do one more dry run with just the heater. And here we go. Let's insert the time delay relay tube. And we are all good for our pot up. <laughs> 